You know, as soon as I realized how naive I was being, I suddenly felt weak and ill. I canceled all my classes for the day. But I suddenly came to senses and realized that, thank God, I'm absolutely fine. Basically, the only thing I'm trying to say is that there is no reason at all to believe what happened to me was, in fact, anything other than what your dear son was trying to convince me to believe, nothing more at all, you see? The Sultan of Scholars knows very well that I earn a living by teaching at the esteemed school and that it doesn't pay as much as it should, but thank God that it does not. It is, in fact, not right for such tricks to create the suspicion of the students, parents within me. Because the parents are the ones who raise a child to be the way that they are when they eventually grow up. Despite the fact that I am Jalal Eddin's assigned teacher by you, it would seem that he does not want to pay attention to my words. I ask to advise him, please, to be a little more serious with his work and studies. Greetings to you, Father, and my teacher as well. Hello. Hello over there, my boy. Are you prepared to tell your father the serious news of how you treated me yesterday during our class session? Huh? I'm glad to see that you are looking a lot better today, teacher. But I can see that you're looking a little pale Enough. from the... Jalaladin, go. Yes. <sighs> the thing that Jalaladin did had one great advantage. And that thing was... I was able to see one of the greatest educators, in bulk after a very long time, come and visit me again. <laughs> Thank you. We will pray strongly for Jalaladin. God willing, we will find a way. So that he doesn't create problems anymore. I apologize for all the trouble he caused you yesterday, teacher. Don't take children's naughtiness to heart, please, master. Well... If you would excuse me, please. May God bless you all of the days of your life, teacher. Goodbye now. The Sultan is asleep. I'm jealous of your peace, father. You've proclaimed war against Genghis, and now you're sleeping at this moment. War? Isn't drowning the messengers of Genghis in the Amudaria a proclamation of war? What are you saying, Jalaladin? Lady Tarkan and your crown prince threw all of Genghis' men in the water. And you are still sleeping at this very crucial moment, father. I sent the Prime Minister on a top priority task with the writing and presence to see Genghis, to prevent war against the Mongols at all costs. But, oh, oh my. But the Prime Minister has not reached Genghis yet, as he and my mother has gone and ruined everything for us now. What does the Prime Minister say now? The Khorazm King sends messengers to apologize to Genghis, but then at the same time, Kills the messengers of Genghis in cold blood. Oh, mother. How unlucky can the Sultan of an Empire be when he has to murder his own mother to protect the land which he rules? We have great sedition to deal with here. The fire that Tarkhan and that foolish child went and lit up today will surely now then catch up with us soon and devastate us all. Calm down, Father. It's too soon to lose hope in the Prime Minister's prudence. He's a great speaker, you know. War is now imminent, Jalaladin. Neither the words of the Prime Minister whose speech I do trust strongly, nor anything else can prevent what's coming. I've never seen you so hopeless before, Father. If the war is now imminent, then we must rise up and fight. 
You fought in wars before, Father. I have fought. And the hardest battle I've taken part in was against a small group of Mongols. They are bloodthirsty people. They have no mercy on men, women, children, or the elderly. Then why did you order the brutal murder of their merchants in Otra? They were devious spies, carefully disguised as merchants then. But then those other four, they were really peace messengers sent here. Genghis does know the difference between the two very well. Otherwise, he would never have sent messengers with a written peace offering at all. say or how to say it in a manner that everyone can understand in the clearest way, and it is not misinterpreted through translation. They kill 300 merchants from a neighboring country overnight and stock up all of their dirty warehouses from what they can take from all the innocent commoners. People, I say this without any tint of fear. You are bearing the brunt of the Sultan's rule in the palm of your hands, and all his ignorant army which protects him and surrounds him, all of his dirty spies and cruel torturers. All of the land is under the control of the Sultan because of the taxes they force you to pay so they can build up their armies to stand up to the enemies. But hear me today, it is you who they consider the enemy. Friends, believe me when I tell you these things, my good people. I know that. The ears of the Sultan are present right here today, and can hear the words I speak of clearly indeed. So I say this to the ears of the Sultan, finish your duty and quote the messenger of God, and tell the Sultan these things that I say to you right now, that a non-believer might still be capable to rule us now, yes, but injustice can never be lasting. Yes, Father. You've created chaos in the city, O Sultan of Scholars, by Dean Valad. They have informed me that the new High Judge of the city is awaiting to see me if I am not mistaken of this. Such a surprise indeed. It's astonishing how times have changed. The Head Judge does not call upon the people, but he goes to the people himself of his own accord, I see. The Prophets have recommended humility. That is true, without a doubt. But now who would call the brutal whipping of mankind, the sick cutting open of the flesh of youngsters, and making the many innocent women of the city flee for their lives in fear? You call that humility? These are the things that are needed to govern a city. Without them in place, the city will not be calm at all. This is how rulers and emirs justify their totalitarianism. You are the head judge of the city, remember that. Mind your job carefully. That is exactly what I am getting to here. I am doing my job, you are not. 
What's dignified and worthy of a knowledgeable preacher like you is to preach to the Muslims about the rules of religion and things like that. And I, the head judge of Balkh, appointed by the great Sultan Muhammad Khurasm himself, am in charge. In charge of dealing with petty arguments and problems these same Muslims will eventually have with each other at some point. You think I don't know that these things are my duty. I am well aware of what is required of me as the high judge. Thank you. We had a head judge in this city a while ago before this too and a few other judges before that as well, but they were busy doing other things and the common man's problems did not interest them. You should know by now that the people accept honest rulings. They do expect to be treated fairly, like honest people of the city here, for an honest judge they trust. <laughs> and that honest judge will be you then, I presume, the Sultan of Scholars, am I right? Yes, without a doubt. Mawid Adin. Yes, Sultan of Scholars. Hassan Sarabande has a son who is decent and a believer, correct? I believe he is worthy of your sister. You have my permission to marry the two. I will definitely do as I am told, Sultan of Scholars. It will probably take place before next Friday. Aside from the judgments that the people in the city ask of me from time to time, they also listen to the suggestions I make because, well, they do consider me a part of the people. My pain and suffering is just like their own pain that they experience daily. You can go now. The common man does not know every single thing I do, or everything that I say. It is necessary for this world and the afterlife. You should tell all of the people today that they should pay you for their religious alms tax and that they should then ask you for religious rulings and come to you in times of arguments or quarrels that need to be sorted out between them when they can't. And then I shall surely give up all that I have been doing this time very easily. Bravo. That is what I say to you now. But the thing right here is, the commoners don't take orders from the sword of the Sultan, but from the depths of their own hearts and their own faith just like they always have all this time, and will do so in future as well. Hear my last words, Bayadine Falad. Leave Balk while you still can. Listen to me now. Listen but... to me, Sheikh. Think of it as the high order of the great Sultan Muhammad Khurasim, which is being repeated to you. Aside from that, it is the right thing for you to do to leave Balk so that those who oppose you, God forbid this to happen, don't find the courage to stand up to you and come and disgrace you in front of all your followers. Go very far away from here. Go as far away as you can from the Sultan's lands, do you hear me? You can be very angry at all of the things I say to you now, but one day you will realize that you actually had made the right choice. There is a secret that even the Sultan does not know here, but I do know it. The Mongols will be attacking us imminently. And if I were you right now, by Dean Valad, I would leave this city as soon as I can. It is said that the world of enmity is rather small compared to the world of friendship. Glory be to Allah. Because people escape the realm of enmity to reach the realm of friendship. But the realm of friendship is also small compared to the realm of friendship and enmity when they are intertwined. Where friendship and enmity, sin and faith create dualism.
When one person dreams at night that he has become a king of a land and is sitting on the high throne with his servants, his guards and emirs surrounding him in the room. He says I must be the king of all kings in all the land. There is no king but me in this kingdom. He says these things in his dream, but when he awakens and sees nobody in his big house all alone by himself, this time he says to himself, it is me, and aside from me there is nobody else. Genghis doesn't fish in a dry river. In fact, he thinks a lot about the things that he does and truly cares about in this world. But he will act decisively and fast when necessary. But still, his silence over the fact that his men were murdered in cold blood is suspicious, don't you think? <sighs> oh well, if the Sultan then believes that the coming war is imminent, then why doesn't he take the upper hand? The Sultan is the type of person who knows that his last hope will turn into hopelessness. But he doesn't want to, or at least won't even accept it. Is there still no word come from the Prime Minister? Not yet. I've come from the capital to see the Sultan. All the way from Bukhara, but now that I can't see him... I'll tell you something that has been bothering me for a while now. I am very terrified. I'm scared about all the horrors that are ahead of us, Jalaladin. Everyone here in the palace, they know that based on the tradition we hold, and interest we have as well, and competence, you were the one who deserved to be the real Crown Prince. No one said a thing, but the people in the cities know, and they won't remain silent. I'm really saddened to say that the Sultan's name will be ridiculed in the alleys and streets of our towns. You know how people are at times like these. They're always opposed to whatever the government in rule decides. They're only waiting for an opportunity. You are a young, wise man and you are ready for war. It is also in our interest that you prepare yourself for the war. This was a very special present that I had brought along with me on my travel to the Crown Prince's ceremony. This is the biggest and most valuable diamond in Bukhara and I'm presenting it to you at this moment. Who surely is, in my opinion, the one true Crown Prince of the land. The Crown Prince is the one who the Sultan ordered to be. I don't want you to think that I'm interested in being the Crown Prince. On my behalf, announce this. Jalal Edin has no claim to the position. 